Good evening and welcome to the Smyrna Town Council workshop to set our agenda for our December meeting. Before we move into our items for discussion, I'm going to ask Chief Arnold to do our prayer tonight and I'm going to ask Mr. Gill to lead us in the pledge. If everyone would please bow your heads. Father in heaven, we come to you today and we ask uh, for your blessings to us. We ask that we ask to give thanks to you uh, for all the many blessings that you continue to bestow upon this community. Lord in heaven, during this holiday season, we ask that you watch over those who are shut in and sick. We ask that you watch over our employees, keep them safe, and please watch over our citizens. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Chief. Mr. Gill. Okay, we will move into um, our items on the agenda tonight. Our first one is a consideration of a resolution relative to a plan of services for property located on Tax Map 51, Partial 33.01. Kevin? Mr. Mayor and Council, the first several items are all kind of around one request, but this, uh, this is the plan of services <coughs> for the John and Sandra Lewis annexation and zoning request. This is for 59.4 acres west of Chicken Pike. Uh, this is a little bit different plan of services than normal and that this one is going to be utilizing either a step system or on-site septic uh, we did build into the plan of services it, it would not preclude sewer being extended if they ever wanted to do so um, uh, but the uh, Planning Commission did recommend approval unanimously and I think you said chicken pike but I think you meant Cook's Lane I'm sorry, I <laughs> Oh, that. That's okay. Um, <coughs> any questions about this? We've already it's already come before us once. Anything? Did we um, find out whether there's going to be a sewer fee with it or not? <coughs> there will be sewer fees with the step system. The rate has not been completed and developed as of yet. I think it'd be similar to the just regular sewer rates. Or? I'm not sure. We have to we have to calculate in maintenance and things like that. With only one step system on our system. How does CUD do that? I mean, they do, they do charge one. Does yes. CUD actually have uh, CUD actually have uh, sewer? No, they have step systems. They have fifty-five or sixty step systems. But they systems. don't have sewer treatment plants. They do or not at all. Do they? No. At yeah. Leach Field, that's what that's designed to do. Basically. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Does Murfreesboro have any step systems on their city? If I'm not mistaken, they have one or their allow it fixing to allow one most of it is uh, standard sewer like we have but uh, they were working with the state and with CUD at the same time we met with them on this project here other questions for Mike or Kevin then we'll move on to item two which is consideration of an ordinance relative to the annexation of property located on tax map 51 partial 33.01 containing approximately 59.4 acres it's requested by john lewis the zoning would be prd the property is located west of cook's lane and it would be a second reading anything else to add kevin i don't have anything to else other than just this is for the the actual development plan itself with the 15 lots and, and everything that goes along with that nothing else to add anything else for Kevin on this we'll move on to item 3 which is consideration of a resolution and memorandum of ordinance 17-50 relative to the annexation and PRD zoning of property located on tax map 51 parcel 33.01 and this is just a housekeeping item if we um, annex the property <coughs> anything else Kevin nothing else Moving on to item four, which is consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 51, parcel 1.02, containing approximately 35.08 acres. It's requested by John Lewis to go from R1 to PRD. The property is located on Cook's Lane. This is a second reading. Yes, this is the portion of this development that was already within the city, so we have to look at it as a separate ordinance. Again, this is a rezoning from R1 to the PRD with the the 15 lots and the private road and, and all those things that go along with that. Um, again, Planning Commission did recommend approval. Anything else for Kevin? Moving on to item 
five, <coughs> consideration of a resolution relative to a plan of services for property located on tax map 51, parcel, part of parcel 9.00 and parcel 9.01. Yeah, this is a plan of services for some land by 33.2 acres south of Lee Road uh, that go along with the, uh, the and it's also the, zone, uh, the, the future annexation and zoning requests as well. Uh, this is a, a standard document. It's, uh, we would be providing all services here except for water. <coughs> Questions for Kevin on this? Okay. Item six is consideration of an ordinance relative to the annexation of properties located on tax map 51, part of parcels 9.00, containing approximately 7.9 acres, and parcel 9.01 containing approximately 25.3 acres. It's requested by RHB LLC. The zoning would be PRD. The properties are located south of Lee Road, and this is a second reading. This is the annexation and zoning request. This tied to the zoning request. That's the next item on the agenda. Um, this is just a <coughs> with the annexation that they would be a part of the overall PRD with the uh, 432 lot single family residential subdivision. Uh, 2,300 square foot minimum on the houses and, uh, and everything else that goes along with that PRD request. Questions for Kevin? Okay, then we will move on to item seven, which is a consideration of a resolution and memorandum of ordinance number 17-52 relative to the annexation and PRD zoning of property for property located on tax map 51, part of parcel 9.01 and parcel 9.01 part of parcel 9.00 and parcel 9.01. And again, this is just a housekeeping item that we're required to do. Correct. Okay, item eight is consideration of an ordinance <coughs> relative to the rezoning of properties located on tax map 51, part of parcel 9.00 and parcel 28.00 containing approximately 180.7 acres. It's requested by RHB LLC to amend the existing approved PRD, the properties are located on Rocky Fork Road, and this is a second reading. Yes, this is an amendment to the PRD. That again, this is the part of the land that is already within the city, and so we had to look at it as a separate ordinance. Uh, this would amend the PRD. It's a 355 lot PRD uh, currently approved, and this would amend it to the 432 lots, uh, change the mix uh, a little bit as far as lot size, and then we're adding the additional 33 acres that was not a part of the original development. And everything else that was a part of the original PRD approval would remain. So, and Planning Commission did recommend approval. Okay, questions for Kevin on this? Okay, we will um, put that on the agenda and move on <coughs> to Item nine, which is consideration of a resolution resolution relative to a plan of services for property located on tax map 54, parcels 50.00 and 50.01. Kevin? Yeah, this is, again, the plan of services for this area. The Planning Commission has recommended approval. Uh, we will pr be providing all services except for water on this one as well. Questions? Okay, we'll move on to item 10, which is consideration of an ordinance relative to the annexation of properties located on tax map 54, parcels 50.00 and 50.01, containing approximately 13.1 acres. It's requested by Sean Collins. The zoning would be R3. The properties are located east of Rocky Fork, Amelville Road, and adjacent to Morton Lane. It is a second reading. Yeah, this is the, the annexation and zoning request. Uh, this is... Uh, adjacent to an existing PRD and uh, across the street we have an another item on your agenda for a PRD rezoning. Um, this, the requested zoning is R3 for this. It's 13.1 acres. Um, this would, uh, we can annex this. It is adjacent to our city limits uh, and the Planning Commission did recommend approval unanimously. Questions for Kevin? Without any kind of traffic study on this one? We didn't have, did not recommend a traffic study on this one. That's pretty small, small 13 acres. How many? How uh, many at this time, I, well, I haven't seen any kind of development plan. 13 acres, <coughs> you might probably, I don't know, maybe 35, 40 houses, probably be the max <coughs> you would probably see on something like that. I, my, my gut feeling is it'll get incorporated into some, maybe some of the other surrounding development that they also own, but, but I don't know that. 
There's just so many new developments going in out that way. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, then we will. Did I, did I that 10? Yeah. Uh, we'll move on to item 11, which is consideration of a resolution and memorandum of ordinance 17 54 relative to the annexation and R3 zoning for properties located on tax map 54, parcels 50.00 and 50.01. And again, that is our housekeeping item. Right. Yes. Okay. We'll move on to item 12, which is consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of properties located on tax map 54, parcels 47.00 and 62.00, containing approximately 109.5 acres. It's requested by Sean Collins to go from R3 to PRD. The properties are located at 8319 and 8575 Rocky Fork Amelville Road. It is a second reading. Kevin? Yes, uh, this is a Again, as a rezoning request, this parcel is, has been annexed already. The proposed developments for 272 lots, uh, minimum of 1,650 square feet, ranging up to 2,800. Uh, it's kind of similar in size and style. The homes is what's approved in Amberton and, and Cedar Hills. I did receive a, a correspondence from the developer late yesterday afternoon. Uh, they, based on the discussion at the council meeting, uh, they have or will be resubmitting something a little bit of an amended plan that actually lowers the number of lots a little bit uh, going to a seven foot side setback versus five and adding some common parking areas for some and that sort of thing so they did they were here at the meeting and heard the discussion and so uh, that will I've told them to get that to me in the next week so that, <coughs> that can be in the packet for the 14th meeting I really appreciate them hearing what some of our concerns were so um but i hope that won't keep us uh, from yes, continuing to look forward and we will to come look, back with forward. some recommendations okay. for you on great that. well i appreciate that on their part any other questions and i guess this is the one that i was really thinking of they with have the both study. this one and the one prior <laughs> to Correct. with same, same approved owner, with yes. no traffic study yeah. out in the same area and we could still look at asking for that you know when they as they move forward this is i don't know exactly what their timeline is i don't get the impression this is something they're going to start tomorrow you know or want to start tomorrow uh they still have some they're working with uh the cedar hills folks and, and getting the water lines upgraded and, uh, and that sort of thing because that will needs to be done to, <coughs> to uh, serve this development as well so you know i think that we have probably have a little bit of time we could ask for still ask for is this not the study. one that required the upgrade to the sewer before it could be go over mm -hmm. i don't think it requires mm -hmm. it, there's a water line it was the same upgrade that cedar hills <coughs> is going to require we'll, we'll take care of the issue for this as well it's the CUD water line, line. It's, it, it, line. it's a okay. cud yeah. water line yes and this really doesn't it does have something to do with this development but not specifically i think it's time that we send something formally to our representatives and our senators and let them know that we need amelville road looked at we need them to start considering that with as much growth as going on out there i mean i know we've already talked to t dot in regards to the diverging diamond actually at the interchange but we sure need something some help with um amelville road itself so if y'all could put something together Absolutely. that we can go ahead and move forward. Yeah, and I think yeah. it's important for us as council yeah. members to get on the phone and anytime we see those individuals to let them know that we need some, not only help at Jefferson Pike, but some help there as well. You know, in particular, you got school buses out there, you got young people negotiating those terms, uh, no shoulders. I mean, it's a terrible road. It is. And, uh, you know, so if it, any of those guys are listening let's, let's get moving on that and we'll put a letter together great yeah and you know i feel confident that if this was not developing within the town this would develop within the county yeah, yeah. agree mm -hmm. so it's not just an issue <coughs> that's being you know it and I, I think mark's hit on this I, I i don't know how many times but when you have some of the best schools in the state and one of the best school systems you know in the state in in uh Stewart's Creek, you're going to have growth, and it's time for these individuals to recognize 
that there are state roads that <clears throat> we could use their help on. So whether it's town or county, you know, it, it it's it's still incumbent upon them to get on board and, and help us with what's going on. Because I don't think you can stop it. Oh, yeah. I agree. Um, it'd be nice if we could put some numbers in there in regards to the number of houses that we've seen in, over the last couple of years and then also uh, what the proposed number that we think are possible. Yeah. So um, I think, th and maybe even if we could find out from the county, do they have anything? I know there are, I know there are county developments out there. Maybe, right. Yeah. So, <coughs> okay, um, moving on to item 13, which is a consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 27, parcel 6.02, containing approximately 21.7 acres. It's requested by Brian Thur on behalf of Taylor Farms to go from C2 to PUD. The property is located at 442 Nissan Drive, and this also is a second reading. Yeah, this is a, has been recommended approval by the Planning Commission. This would rezone the property to the PUD with the uh, primary use being about a 310,000 square feet industrial building. Uh, there was an approval to, uh, as part of the recommendation, to allow for C2 uses as well. Um, and that that could be divided off or something like that if, if that is ever needed to happen. Um, we did, a as part of the recommendation, to ask for a traffic study. We did receive that earlier this week. Um, so we are reviewing that and there are some recommendations for some, some intersection improvements to turn lanes and different things like that. So um, we will review that and I'll try to get that as part of your packet for your, uh, so you all can see that as well for your, uh, uh, the 14th meeting. Okay. <coughs> Questions for Kevin on this? Then we'll move on to item 14, which is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Volkert. Volkart relative to the update of the comprehensive plan. Yeah, this is uh, something that's been talked about and was in the budget um, for this year. We did open up an RFQ for, uh, for firms to do a comprehensive plan update. We did receive three submittals, uh, and myself, Mike Moss, and Tom Rose reviewed those submittals. And the top scoring firm was Volkart. Uh, that is a firm we have not hired before. However, Several of their staff members were a part with the other firm, uh, the different firm, were a part of the original uh, comp plan from 2007. So the, the, there is some carryover with staff and familiarity with the town uh, and our, our plan. So, uh, and they have, uh, there are some additional staff as well that, are, that have worked in other communities uh, in the Middle Tennessee area. So they're very familiar with what's the growth and everything that's going on. So uh, this was, uh, I think, a good firm. We don't have a contract or a fee yet. We, I did receive a, 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 a more detailed scope of services earlier this week. We'll review that. We'll endeavor to have that for you for your packet for the 14th. Um, I know it will um, require a lot of citizen input, that sort of thing, which I think we're all very much in favor of. About how long do you think the process, once we get started, will be? They are anticipating about 12 months. Okay. Yeah. And okay. I would anticipate, obviously, if we you all approve the contract in December, really it won't get started until January. So hopefully, calendar year 2018. Okay. Yeah. Other questions about this? I think this is, HG's been pushing this for quite a while. I think it can be a real benefit to not only us, but to anybody that comes after us to kind of have a game plan for the way, the direction the city's moving. So I'm glad to well, see us get this. The changed a lot since we did the last <coughs> Oh man. Yeah. Unbelievable what to what's transpired and just a matter of keeping us on track to, with the new uh, new ideas. Yep. Okay, we'll move on to item 15, which is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Klein Sweeney Associates relative to the downtown <coughs> master plan. Kevin? Yes, this is a, a separate project. Uh, we did open up RFQs same time, same day uh, as we did the comp plan. Uh, we have received 10 uh, firms did submit on this one, so uh, more interest in this one. Uh, again, same group of folks uh, reviewed those, and the top scoring firm uh, is a led as a client Sweeney Associates, uh, along with uh, Reagan Smith, and uh, there's another another sub consultant that name. <laughs> no, not Randall Gross. It was uh, group, uh, Community Solutions Group was the name of the, uh, the third one. Um, 
again, same situation. We don't have a contractor the fee yet. I will be meeting with them on uh, Monday to kind of go over this. And so we'll have that for you for your December 14th. Questions for Kevin on this? Was this not the same type of plan that Reagan Smith did for the downtown master plan? Well, they did the Lowry Street overlay study. So there's some, Which there some duplication in area a little bit. In the, but uh, this is really more looking at the area off of Lowry Street on both sides. And, and it's kind of, it's the area, at least that's what I anticipate we would look at. Uh, would be behind Lowry, you know, the Meth near the Methodist Church and, and all that area, as well as on the west side, We're the ha the Hazelwood, Enos Springs, uh, some of the, well, larger than the, the historic zoning area. That's what I'm certain. saying, where to take it. Yeah. If we were to enlarge If we ever wanted to enlarge it, right. wouldn't necessarily have to be a part of that. You could just be a more of a, you know, a, I think it's going to include some potential capital improvements or there are sidewalks we need to add, things of that nature. Uh, potential redevelopment opportunities, especially on the east side, I think. There's some areas <coughs> there, some properties that could be combined and, and redeveloped. And uh, there's opportunities out there for, you know, incentives for new development in that area and that sort of thing. So. And are they going to be able to bring us those sorts of <coughs> things, recommendations for what we as a town can do? Yes, that's okay. that was part of the. That's what we want to do. Yes. Okay. That's part of it. Not a master plan for the area, but also those options, the things that we right. can look at. Yeah. Okay. Will they have uh, expertise in the area of, of tax incentives and such as that that can be offered to the the, uh, the property the consultant owner? that I had trouble remember <laughs> the name it has that. Yeah, not Klein Sweeney itself, but their sub, and they have worked together on other projects uh, and doing similar things. Do you know of any communities that they've specifically worked with locally? I tend their. Will you just uh, will you just send it out so sure, we? Sure. Yeah. That'd I, be it's, great. It's in their uh, qualification set they sent us. There are I, there. I can name you some, but I can't stop my head. That's fine. Remember, but yeah. Because I know there are other <coughs> communities that are looking to do exactly what we're doing that are smaller than we are, that are larger than we are, and so. I know it seems like such a huge undertaking, but I think there are others that are out there that have been successful. Mm -hmm. And so it's not going to be something we can do overnight, but it'll right. be something we can do a little bit at a time. Right. And this would be a, a plan of action, certainly, that would be a long term process. It would right. be something we would all do at one, everything right. at one time. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Kevin on this one? Okay. The Kevin show is over. It's now time for Mike Moss. Uh, item 16 is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Life Point Church relative to the Smyrna Parks and Recreation practice field area. Mike. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Council. Uh, this is an annual agreement we uh, uh, we have with Life Point Church to use just a practice area in the bottom. We typically use that mostly in the spring when we have uh, mostly uh, a lot of baseball teams needing practice areas. So. Uh, we mow and maintain it, and obviously they owe it. Uh, they own it. We don't pay a fee except <coughs> for the maintenance that we, that we use to take care of it. Uh, we've used it for several years, and it seems to work for us. Uh, we just ask for approval for another year. Questions for Mike on this? <coughs> Okay, we'll move on to item 17, which is <coughs> approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with the Tennessee Rehab Center relative to the Smyrna Parks and Recreation use of the field area. Uh, yes, ma'am. This is kind of the same deal, uh, annual agreement with the Rehab Center, which is state-owned. Um, it's about a six-acre field. It does have a dirt infield over there, which is used a lot by our leagues. Um, and we have about three or four backstops over there. We mow and maintain that area. Um, it's pretty handy when we have tournaments at Volunteer Park as well. They'll go over there and practice uh, when they can if the Rehab Center is not using it. So, uh, again, mostly baseball uses that practice field, but some other uh, leagues will use it as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, but last year we had some issues in regards to parking and people having to park so far away, mm -hmm. and they were they were doing some renovations, and so they had some stuff in the parking lot. Did that all get? We still don't have access to the back parking lot because of a security issue there. I think we can work on it and probably get it um, right now. Last year it wasn't as big of a deal. The year before they had construction going on, so we didn't need to be in there anyway. Right. Um, but it, it was better last year, but we still could use. We're going to continue to stay there. I think we'll have more parking closer. 
Well, I mean, mamas with other kids and strollers and trying to be there to watch their kids practice and all that, I know hauling all of that stuff that far away sometimes is um, difficult for yeah, them. And we so. can holler at them again and work that out before spring, or hopefully can. Yeah. Great. Um, any other questions for Mike on that? Can you deal with Tom Fusco on there? Um, uh, that name doesn't sound familiar. No, the last time. I know. Isn't he facilities? Is yes. he the facilities guy? Yeah. yeah. Okay, moving on to item 18 is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with the science with Science Center relative to the Turtle Travels exhibit in the Smyrna Outdoor Adventure Center. Mike. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is the same uh, group that we've got the, the current rental with uh, down at the Outdoor Center. This one's called Turtle Travels, and um, it's like a life-size board game for the little ones, and there's several exhibits that come in there. Um, with that and it'll just take up the exhibit area that we're using right now and it'll leave the lecture hall uh, where we can use that for other things and uh, you can see the exhibit area is 1218 square feet we'll run this exhibit January to May of 2018 um, and it costs uh, $10,000 plus shipping um, and that <coughs> the regular price they're giving us a break because we're already using them um, and it's available it's 13,500 uh, so we're getting a little bit of break there it looks like a pretty simple one to switch out, which is important for us. Great. Questions for Mike on this? We were down Tuesday night and got to see the Bloodsucker <laughs> exhibit. It was actually pretty cool. So. My sister was right home. Uh, <laughs> careful there. Santa's listening, HT. Uh, we will move on to item 19. Consideration of a resolution authorizing the mayor to sign and forward the resolution to the state of Tennessee Department of Transportation relative to the I-24 Smart Corridor project. Tom? Uh, thank you, Mayor Council. Uh, Mr. Gill, the mayor, uh, Kevin Rigsby, and I have been attending the I-24 Smart Corridor uh, uh, meetings, uh, what they're wanting to, us to do. Those are led by TDOT and a couple of their uh, consultants. Here's other government agencies involved. There's FHWA, City of Murfreesboro, Laverne, Rutherford County, Metro Nashville, Tennessee Highway Patrol, RTA, MTA, as well as, as Town of Smyrna. And what they're wanting to do is all these different groups to sign a resolution saying that we will work together on this project. It doesn't require any funding from the municipalities. It is funded through TDOT, but it's just the resolution saying we do plan on working together with everyone in coordination on the Smart Corridor project. Questions for Tom on this? Can you spell out what the Smart Corridor project actually is? Uh, right now, what they're looking, uh, what they've been evaluating, what they've completed is called an existing conditions and needs assessment, trying to determine what are the causes of the slowdowns and the major spikes in travel time coming from Rutherford County into uh, <coughs> downtown Nashville. Uh, they've identified a lot of those problems there during. Some of the best conditions, it can take 35 minutes to get into Nashville. In some of those bad spike conditions, it can take up to 85 minutes to get into Nashville or out of Nashville, depending on what had occurred. What they're looking to do with this project is to bring those spikes down and make it more of uh, an anticipated amount of time to get in and out. If it's a cons more of a consistent 45 to 50 minute travel time is what their ultimate goal of uh, the Smart Corridor project. And getting people off 24 if there's an accident over onto Murfreesboro Road and vice versa and ways of doing that. One of the things Mr. Gill and I were in a meeting um, with some other Rutherford County officials and some from RTA and GNRC, one of the things that they asked us that we may want to bring up at the next meeting is nothing is discussed in here about bus on shoulder any of that stuff and so does that need to be included in this as well in the resolution no not in the resolution just i'm talking about in the discussion and that was just their question what else it was the bus on shoulder it was the well i mean they they got dreaming pretty heavily talking about light rail and yeah uh, the billions of dollars it would cost uh, bus on shoulders we even got in a little bit about staggering work schedules in Nashville. Uh, you know, we're, I mean, one, one thing we, 
surmise from the meeting is that if you think it's bad now, just wait 10 years or 15 or 20 right. years, there's got to be some kind of solution that's, that's discovered uh, and there'll be costs associated with it. But uh, those were a few of the things. So they were just wanting it, did, <coughs> wanting to see if it could be discussed at the meetings as being added into being looked at. Yeah, they've discussed the bus on shoulder a few times at, at the meeting, and that is uh, an option. They're trying to work out the logistics as far as will the shoulder allow a bus to consistently run on it without degrading it, and, and how yeah. it's actually. And then also work. where the overpasses come, right? You know, having to get our rounds, yeah. So. Okay. Well, so I just told him I would bring that up. This right. this resolution, though, this this just basically commits us to participating in the project planning mm -hmm. concept. Even though it says funding plan, there is no cap or no plan funding yet at this point, right? It's just funding for the planning. <laughs> right. Gotcha. Okay, we'll move on to item 20, which is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Gresham Smith and partners relative to additional services for ITS phases one and two. Tom? Uh, yes, we recently got approval for right away acquisition on phase one and two. And now we're getting ready to go into construction phase. They have reviewed the construction plans. Uh, what Gresham needs to do at this point is to put together the bid book, bid advertisement, and that's what these calls are associated with. So we can submit those to TDOT for review and approval so we can go into construction phase after that. Question for Tom. One of the things at the meeting that uh, we were at <coughs> that the gentleman told us to make sure is in our boxes and stuff for that, that we're planning for the future, remember? Yes. Are we doing, are we gonna yes. do that? Those are, we're putting some of the largest boxes that we can put, that we put in there. They're gonna put extra slots for uh, the cameras, I think the, I think was the that what he was talking about something yeah, there was yeah. something else that he was talking about that I don't know mm -hmm. if we thought about before I can't remember I can't remember okay mm -hmm. I just think I'll it may be worth following it. up just to make sure we're getting everything we need All right. we're, we're assuming the numbers are going to the actual numbers will be in the packet before yes and it's going to be around eight to eight to nine thousand dollars but I'm still trying to get that number from Gresham okay, okay. Moving on to item 21 is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute documents with the excess carriers relative to the town's self-insured program. <coughs> Hi, Ms. Kay. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. Uh, Mayor Council, this is the annual premium for the reinsurance. The 2% uh, increase was mainly due to the uh, town's exposure increase, and this is a positive recommendation for the town. Okay. Questions? Great. We'll move on to item 22, which is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a renewal contract with Cigna for third party administrator, provider network, and reinsurance stop loss for the town's health insurance plan. Sure thing. Mayor Council, uh, Cigna has been our provider for the town's health plan, uh, which includes dental vision as well as our stop loss coverage for several years. Uh, we did rebid it last year, and they did give us a three year quote. And so this is our renewal for this year. Uh, one of the things that they do rebid each year or they do quote each year is the stop loss coverage and we are getting a flat renewal on that as well. So there'll be no increases to our health plan uh, from Cigna standpoint uh, for 2018. Questions? Jeff? Okay, we'll move on to item 23, which is consideration of an ordinance amending Municipal Code Title Three, Municipal Court, Chapter <laughs> 1, Town Court Administration, Section 3-101. Establishment of full-time town court, section 3-102, maintenance of docket, docket section 3-108, <coughs> imposition of fines, penalties, and costs, and section 3-110, disposition and report of fines, penalties, and costs. This is a first reading. Yes, Mayor Council, as we've discussed many times, we're headed towards uh, recodification, trying to clean up our uh, municipal code. Uh, and, and doing those things that, that we can proactively outside of American Legal before uh, they issue our, our new document to pass. And we sent out uh, uh, basically to all of our departments that have certain uh, ordinances that are attached to, to their department that they work around and asked them for any improvements that they see or any uh, things that we need to change that maybe just uh, 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 isn't the way that it works basically uh, the way that it has been. This would not substantially change anything that's, that's occurring in the courts. Um, this just cleans up the language that uh, dictates that the uh, 
court clerk is responsible for keeping the dockets and also for making an accounting of the funds uh, to the town manager. It's not for um, the judge doesn't do that. Um, the and while we were in there, we also decided uh, that we would go ahead and and remove any gender references to the positions as well in there. So we've cleaned that up as well. Uh, the the judge and the town clerk are also here. If you have any questions of them, Lori Rockhill <coughs> and I like that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't mind. Jeff, is, is there? I do have a question. Is there anything in here that that talks about the? Um, the operating hours of the clerk. Um, one of the complaints that I've heard is that when court runs long, the clerk's office is closed when people come out of court. And I didn't know if there was something in here that talks about the hours of operations or not. Uh, I'd have to go back and reread it to make sure f uh, for that, and I can get you an answer for well, that. My, I don't. My question is, if I don't believe not, that it does. Should, should there be something that says, as long as court's in session, the clerk's office should be open? Sure. Uh, the uh, yeah the office and we'll we'll talk with them. Mr. Gill can talk with them. I know that if court is going on, as far as that I know, there's going to be a clerk there that's keeping the docket. Now I don't know if that office for all of those employees, for overtime purposes enough. I don't know if the entire office they could probably answer that for you better. Than yeah, what what I've like specifically it. heard is when folks are coming out to make payments, if it's after 4:30 or 5 or whatever the time is, then the window is often closed and people have to actually come back. Which yeah, could it, generate. I think I can, if you don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but Jeff Craig is doing a little research on that for me. Uh, we do run a four day work that week down there, and, and you know, some work Monday, Thursdays, uh, some work Tuesday, Friday. Uh, and they have been shutting down at 4 30, and they apparently reconcile the books and prepare the, uh, the cash for deposit. But I'm looking at the possibility of staggering the schedule so that, and, and I need to find out from the judge specifically what days they have court. Jeff's working on that. What uh, what time the last case will be heard, uh, and we're looking uh, we're looking at possibly accommodating people to the point you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, obviously, what I'm concerned about is one, if if people have to pay a fine, I don't want them to have to possibly take sure. another day off from work or come back at a different time. And in addition, if if they have the money to pay it as they leave the courtroom, it's likely less yeah. fees we may have to chase down later. Right. Uh, which cost us money. So they stop at Walmart instead of paying the court fee and we right. out of luck. Is that the only department that works a four-day work week? I believe so, yes. Uh, I'm just curious. When yeah. you're doing research, can you find out why? I think that's the case, isn't it, Jeff? As far as I know, that's the only yeah. department that is. Which I don't have an issue with. Uh, but I think if, if we're doing that, I mean, I think we have the potential or the opportunity to, to as I said, accommodate people past 430 but anyway we're we're looking into that and I'll get back with you on it thank you okay we will move on to item 24 which is consideration of an ordinance amending municipal code title 16 streets and sidewalks etc chapter 1 miscellaneous section 16-110 parades etc regulated first reading Jeff Yes, Mayor and Council, and to give uh, a lot of credit to uh, Nathan Nichols that worked uh, pretty hard on this. Um, we all know that the situation that, that occurred in Rutherford County this year of, of having uh, uh, larger gatherings and, and things like that coming to, not so much to our city, but within our county. And we want to be prepared for those types of things as, as things change. And, and uh, with social media, it's a lot easier to get large groups together and, and also to organize. So we want to be able to have a, a, a good and, and fair response to those types of things. This uh, sets forth for two different things, uh, encompassing mainly gatherings and parades. So it's set out to deal with both of those because our code right now is pretty much non-existent as it applies to, to parades uh, and really nothing with uh, at all with gatherings. So this would uh, lays out uh, a process that individuals that or groups that would like to have uh, these public gatherings, it gives a little bit of framework to how that would uh, transpire, uh, especially for the police department to give uh, the chiefs some notice and some input uh, into the ability to allow folks to express themselves, but also by keeping them safe as well as, as the rest of the citizens safe. Um, the only thing that we will need to decide, and I'll try to come back to you with a recommendation Obviously, this will take two readings, 
but we, we will need to come up with a fee uh, for the permit. So fee for the gathering, a fee for the parade. Uh, obviously, there's also a, a, a clause in both that allows, if there's some reason that someone would be unable to pay, that the town manager could make that decision uh, if there was a reason that they couldn't. Uh, main thing is we cannot make a fee overburdening uh, where it would quell someone's speech, so we don't want to do that. But it also uh, will be taking up more time of our uh, Ms. Diane's office and our clerks so that we want to at least have a, a bit compensated for administrative fee for that. Uh, will you be able to make some recommendations of that based on what other communities are doing? Yes, and I will do that at our council meeting. Do, do, do you know if those other communities, do the fees usually in, include things like rec recurring costs for additional police officers? I mean, I know that with what happened in Murfreesboro, there was several articles in the paper about the cost. Sure. And I mean, our city in, in alone had a pretty significant cost just sure. to provide police. And I know you can't say, you know, you're going to have to pay $100,000 for this permit, sure. but is there some sort of, do they normally try to recoup some of that cost or is it just an administrative fee? Well, on the two different issues, obviously this, the permit fee is really just an administrative fee. However, built into this ordinance is where the chief of police advises them, you've got to have uh, this amount of security, these types of issues. Uh, that it's going to be at the sole cost of the requester. Now, obviously, there's some issues, just as you mentioned, Councilman, as, as you're w well aware, some issues we just have to bear the burden as, as the local government to, to keep right. folks safe. But, but it does have what is allowed, at least. Uh, we put, to the fullest extent that we're allowed, we put in there for uh, those types of things to be paid for out of the request order. Thanks. And I noticed that these are at parks and other town-owned facilities and gatherings so are you I don't see a definition just for lack of you know I mean is it birthday parties political functions what what is included in the gathering well it does state that it's not dealing with private or let's go back and see the words uh, e actually says public gathering means any gathering, meeting, or rally held primarily for the purposes of expressing freedom and amendment freedom. So it's people getting together for the express purpose of Only. free speech. Like if it's a private birthday party, those types mm -hmm. of things, that's not going to fall into the same okay. treatment. If it's going to be for uh, asserting the First Amendment rights or speeches or we even have uh, built into this uh, when there's the breaking news types of events that you can't plan for as well but we still have a little bit of a framework that gives the police chief some ability to to control uh, at least where these may take place so that everybody uh, is safe because under the, under the uh, the laws we can regulate time place and manner we just cannot cut it out so uh, and obviously that's monitored quite heavily. We don't want to quell anybody's speech. <coughs> so all of this is for ones that pre-plan, do all that. <clears throat> what happens with the group that comes in and they're going to protest without doing all this? Well, if they what's then our what what are what then recourse do we have? Obviously, it's going to be fact dependent. But if you're talking about large crowds and stuff of that nature, you can have un unlawful assembly. Obviously, they're not allowed even through this uh, without prior approval to be to block streets, those types of things, to uh, keep folks from uh, doing what they normally would do, like our parks that say that they have uh, uh, tournaments going on, not being able to disturb that, not being able to disturb the traffic of the fire department or the ambulance service, or those types of things. So the, the chief... Uh, which there's always a, a, a fine line, but there's you know there are laws on the books that deal with uh, disorderly conduct and disturbing the peace and those types of things that, that you kind of have to deal with on a case by case basis. Okay. Other questions for Jeff on this? Okay, we'll move on to item 25, which is appointment of one member uh, to the board of zoning appeals to serve an unex un an unexpired term ending in 2020. Um, Jeff, do you remember how? This is just a town council uh, okay. 
will. Uh, it's not appointed by the mayor. Okay. Okay. Questions on that? Okay. Then we'll move on to our items under other. Anything, Jeff? I know you had something under other, or is yeah, Mike do. doing Tom, that? Tom's going to have it. Yeah. Tom's going to handle it. Okay. It's, uh, we recently evaluated, we recently uh, did the uh, San Ridley Corridor project for engineering consulting services. It's the widening of San Ridley as well as the relocation of a, a extension of Potomac Place to intersect with uh, Cheney Boulevard. And uh, we had four consultants uh, respond, Reagan Smith, Kimberly Horn, Gresham Smith, and Weiser consultants. Based on the evaluation committee, we ranked uh, Gresham Smith first. In, uh, recommend them for approval. This is the LIC funded project that uh, the mayor, Mr. Gill, and had been working on. Questions for Tom on this? Okay, then we will put that on the agenda and then Jeff, I think you have the other item under other. Uh, yes, Mayor, and I'll probably ask uh, Director Strange to also step in. This is uh, as I explained to you in your email, uh, uh, interlocal sewer agreement with uh, the city of Laverne for sewer service in a, a certain basin on, on Blair Road that uh, just uh, not as conducive for, for, for them to, to serve, and they've asked the town to uh, serve the entire basin of this new development. Um, it was just on Wednesday that I was able to speak with uh, Evan Cope, who represents the city of Laverne. Uh, so they've just received it themselves, so they've not been able to have a chance to, to comment back yet. Uh, also, if you probably noticed, you received an alert in your Dropbox that I even changed the one that I'd sent you earlier. And the reason for that is the problem with keeping working documents is you may send the wrong one sometimes. But uh, uh, there's no, no substantial changes other than I, I replaced the outside sewer rate instead of the inside sewer rate will be charged. Um, but if you have any further questions, Mike can kind of answer any of the operational issues that we have here but Laverne would consider this as well in December because I believe there's some lots that uh, the developers are wanting to close on by December 31st uh, obviously not on their schedule but at the same time uh, if this is something that will work and, it, and it's good then we go ahead and do it and this all came to be because of that subdivision we approved that was half hours and well no more like three four hours and a fourth theirs wasn't it Opposite, yeah, opposite, opposite, a fourth yeah. and three fourths. Okay. Yeah, we had about 15 lots or so. The rest of it was theirs, and you know we had talked about who was going to serve it. Uh, we ended up at first saying, you know, we would do our part, they would do theirs, and then we agreed to do the subdivision. But after a review of the basin and meeting with them again, this entire basin is only about 260 acres. It's just a little bit larger than the properties that you guys just talked about on Rocky Fork and Lee Road. Uh, shouldn't be an issue uh, won't cause us any any uh, uh, decreased time of expanding the plant with this this small amount of basin so it, it's the right thing for us to do and and uh, then of course we, mr. Gill uh, asked us to move forward with this and, and Jeff's been working on the agreement so so this is just sewer will they get water from CUD or Laverne it's their water it's Laverne's water. Okay, so this is sewer only. So these houses will get a bill from Laverne, Smyrna, both, right? No, Laverne will bill. Yeah, Laverne will do like we do with bill and a charge we'll back kind of thing. Give it back. Okay, us. Yes. Okay. Questions for Mike on this? Okay, we will move into our directors. Oh, is there anything else under other? I didn't see anything else. Okay, then we will move into our directors report, Chief. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have started uh, taking our applications for our uh, Citizens uh, Police Academy. And so people can actually go on our website and they can register for it. And it's, uh, in my opinion, of course, I'm a little biased, but in my opinion, it's a very excellent program, uh, an opportunity for our citizens to learn more about their police department. And last year, we actually opened it up to 16 years of age and older uh, and had some great success uh, with that, allowing some of our high school kids to come in and learn about, her, about their police department. So if you're interested, it uh, starts in February, it lasts 12 weeks, 
and it's on Thursday nights, and uh, it's an excellent opportunity, like I said, to get to know what your police department does and why they do certain things. And the only other thing is I've, uh, for over 10 years now, we have uh, done extra patrols in our business areas uh, with extra duty uh, by some of our officers uh, just to make sure that during the Christmas season our shoppers are, and our businesses are feeling safer. And so we are saturating those, those areas as we speak. So uh, just wanted to inform you all of that. Other than that, I'm open for questions. The one thing, I was just in policeman the other day, just lock your cars. I, I mean, we, I, with I, your purse sitting I've in there. I've been in law enforcement unlocked. for 38 years, and for 38 years I've been saying that. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, yes. And right now we are dealing with, and which every agency is dealing with it too. It's just not a smarter thing. But we're dealing with a large amount of auto burglaries where they, the kids will drive in, they drop off to a three, and they saturate a neighborhood, and they're, all they're doing is going around checking car doors and they're getting guns and money and whatever else they can find in there. Uh, so please lock your cars and please take your weapons out of your vehicle at night and put them up. So. Any questions for Chief? Thank Thanks, you. Chief. Tom? Uh, just uh, as a little update, uh, you guys talked about Allenville Road earlier and the uh, diverging diamond interchange. I'd emailed um, Sean Armstrong with TDOT a couple of months ago and according to Sean, they have they do have money through safety grants. So they, they we're trying to do it through safety grants through the DDI. The problem is that there's only two million dollars available at a time through the safety improvement upgrade program, and it costs about four and a half million dollars for uh, a DDI. They're looking to get additional funds from FHWA for that, but it's a very slow process with the safety upgrade program. There's a longer list of projects. That mix so now they're looking at possibly getting grant money through the Improve Act to do the uh, DDI at Amville. Do uh, we need to send Paul a letter reminding him of what he told us in the meeting? As long as it doesn't offend him. Right but I mean yeah, yeah. because uh, I mean, his specific response in the meeting was that they would cover that. Yeah yeah, yeah that was his response. Right. I don't. I don't think. I think it. Uh, actually, Tom and I'll be down there Monday at two thirty, with a little look. Maybe he'll pop his head in, and we'll remind him initiate that discussion. Otherwise, we can. Yeah, you know, we can shoot him an email or a letter. I just wonder if Sean remembers that. I can't remember if Sean was in that meeting. I can't remember. Somebody yeah. was. Somebody was. I can't remember. But that was his exact words. So. Okay. Uh, I guess the. Uh, the Eden Springs West Extension Project, we still have six tracks. Uh, there's three different property owners of those tracks that we're working uh, out, uh, working on. Uh, one of them, uh, their <coughs> legal department has uh, been turned over to Jeff Peach. They've been trying to get a counter offer from them. And uh, another one is uh, trying to go through the courts to get ownership of the property because the owner had died in test eight. And, uh, once they actually, which I believe by mid-December, that should be complete. And they'll have someone who can sign to actually sell us the property. And then the last four tracks are the uh, Taufero tracks uh, closer to Old Nashville Highway. Uh, we've been in negotiation with them on some of the things that they're asking for as far as improvements to the road to be able to access each side, uh, property on each side of the road. Uh, Stonecrest, Sam Ridley, we're uh, December 13th. The NPO is going to meet again to approve some additional funds for that project, and we'll be able to go out. Uh, once that tip page gets adjusted, they'll go to FHWA, uh, and hopefully within a few months after that, we'll get notice to proceed to construction phase. Uh, we'll be able to bid the project and get it going here soon. Questions for Tom? I think I noticed um, on the Enon Springs project that one of those properties the one you'd said they're trying to get a counter offer they haven't responded at all or in a while correct uh, correct it's been a while Jeff I think Jeff Peach's office is going to be dealing with that the uh, Mount View Baptist Church yes and, and while you're on that I just want to <coughs> comment briefly we've been very fortunate throughout all of these land acquisitions we've not really had we've not had to file condemnations uh, due to someone not agreeing with our price 
what holds us up, which we did finish Jefferson, but what holds us up on these, the other two that we we're speaking of is either one, we run into these MERS mortgages, which is basically a, a, a ghost mortgage where you can't get it at the title office, so then you, you gotta track down who the mortgage company is, and currently one is DITEC. You cannot get further than the first line person, so you can't even get what you need, so we're probably gonna have to file a condemnation uh, in one of those. And then separately, we're trying to work with the uh, attorney with the, the church. They've not uh, said they're opposed to our, our number, but they're wanting to have their own appraisal. Uh, and they said that they've had trouble trying to get an appraiser for the next two to three months. It's only 0.7 acres or less, maybe, maybe 0.3 acres. Anyway, it's, they're gonna spend more on an appraiser than they will of what we'll pay probably, but we cannot force their hand that they said that they would uh, agree to us getting right of entry, but we would still have to file for condemnation with that. But that's what that, we're that doing. That could be their church board uh, <coughs> trying to satisfy the church board sure. to make sure they do their due diligence. Sure. Yeah, and it, it's possible they just yeah. don't understand that the small portion of property that it is doesn't rec re doesn't represent a large amount of money. Sure, and I've called and left a, a, a quite long message with <laughs> the attorney to explain that to him of, you know, we're only dealing with this amount of Yeah, even if we doubled our offer, back. it's only a few hundred dollars, right? right? It's not a lot of money. And they're not resisting us to having the property, it's just that they want to make sure they're getting their price, obviously. Well, there is good news, though. We started out with, what, 20, close to 30? 30, 30, 35. 35, you know, we've acquired all but six or seven, and the Talaferos, I think we're close to closing. You know, we've been on the phone with Steve Steele, who's representing them. Uh, we're close to wrapping that up and that leave us that would leave us with just two two, yes. two I believe so we're almost there so with the 1231 deadline that we put in place it looks like potentially just the two properties may be the condemnation Correct. properties yeah. okay other questions for Tom weekly swan uh, weekly swan uh, there's seven tract owners on it uh, there was <coughs> TDOT didn't like the language in the instrument that was signed by the owners, so we would have to go back and get uh, those re-signed. I would say we get four of the seven re-signed so far. They don't have a whole lot of motivation to sign because they've already got paid. So we were uh, trying to uh, get them to uh, the last three to sign. I've been trying to contact me by email or phone call at least once a week just to get those signed and brought back in. Uh, we have went ahead and submitted all the uh, bid book, the bid documents, the DBE goal sheets, and all the other paperwork to TDOT to go ahead and let them review that and approve it while we're getting um, these other documents signed and recorded at the county. Hopes to kind of get those done simultaneously to uh, keep the process on it moving forward. Are these owners uh, local or are they out of state? Uh, some of them were out of state. Uh, one of them that's out of state down in Florida. Uh, it's a cell tower company. Uh, it's just he, he answers the phone, and it's someone above him who has to sign the document. Unfortunately, it's just I'm afraid just sitting on somebody's desk right now. Any other questions? Okay, Robert. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, Information Services has been uh, spending a good bit of time out at the uh, event center, and I'm um, glad to report that uh, we're probably a little over halfway done with that uh, AV project. And uh, the Smyrna Rotary Club was the first group to make use of the new audio system uh, in the uh, <coughs> main ballroom today, and uh, that seemed to go real well. Okay. The, um, uh, there's still a little bit to do. We're working on the projection systems for uh, video and whatnot. But uh, it is moving right along. Great. Questions for Robert? Good. Mike? Yes, ma'am. Our uh, Parks Advisory Board uh, selected uh, this year's winner for the Kenneth Coon uh, Victory Lifetime Service Award, which is Mike Allen. I think most of us know Mike. and um, He's one of the first people I met when I moved here. And with football then, he's with football now. So uh, and he's done a lot in the city. So we're at we're excited to, to award that to him. Also, our Young Leader Award uh, was selected by the Parks Advisory Board, uh, Sydney Sane, and she'll, remove, she'll uh, receive a $500 scholarship award from Simon. So um, we're excited about that. Also, in regards to the Captain uh, Jeff Coos Memorial, just uh, ongoing work up there. Of course, today wasn't a great day for 
for anything but breaking rock, and that's what they did. Um, so they're they hope to be uh, finished with uh, removing some rock by tomorrow, where they can start setting some footers for concrete. Um, also, we attended a grant workshop in Murfreesboro yesterday. Uh, it's uh, the grant that we were able to build uh, West Fort Park with. Those are that grant cycle is coming around again. It's every two years. Um, so we, I think we've got some opportunities there if we want to uh, try to go after that again. Also, uh, just to let you know, if you're down at the SOAC, if you can uh, visit uh, the art gallery, the, our senior citizens have uh, placed some art in there, and it is fantastic. Um, uh, you can kind of tell where their heart is with what they paint. So um, I, I really appreciate them uh, doing that, and I um, hope you can make it down to see that. Also, uh, just in regards to the SOAC, we've been contacted for other, by Rutherford County Schools in regards to, to some field trips. Um, so that's kind of our goal to kind of come up with some curriculums and uh, have some subjects they can select uh, where we can introduce them to our facility. Great. Questions for Mike? Rex? October local sales tax collected. A million sixty-nine thousand three hundred forty-one dollars. That gives us a year-to-date deficit of one hundred ninety-six thousand five hundred and eighty-three dollars. The October state shared tax four hundred and ninety-nine thousand eight hundred and ninety-eight dollars. That gives us a year-to-date deficit of nine thousand four hundred and sixty-six dollars. Just to let you know, my wife's heading me out shopping. <laughs> Shop locally, keep our sales tax dollars in smart. That's right. That's exactly right. I thought you might have you out looking for a coach for Temple University of Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> have to go forward yeah. along about that. <laughs> 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 uh, that was bad. I thought. Questions <laughs> for Rex? They I obviously didn't want there. that Ohio huh? State I coach, did they? Mr. Gill. They obviously didn't want that guy from Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I wasn't going to be quite that nice. <laughs> I, I don't understand it. But yeah, do. uh, Kevin? Uh, planning Commission is next week, and we have not as long of an agenda, but we still have quite a bit, uh, about three rezoning requests coming to you all probably. One, three items that are kind of a highlight for me or, or good at things. Uh, another building out the airport, about a little over half a million square feet. Uh, Motlow's building is on the agenda, and uh, the apartments that were approved on Rock Springs and Stonecrest, their site plans come in, and it matches what they told us they were going to do with PUD. So. Great. Questions for Kevin? Steak and shake? We haven't heard anything. Well, they, I think they do have a permit. Steve's not here tonight. I think they do finally at least had a grading permit. I think, so. Good. Kevin, I know we've got a lot of growth going on right now. I appreciate what you do to meet with these people, counsel with them, and prepare them for what lies ahead. Uh, I know they're keeping your office pretty busy right now. We are pretty busy. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is Kay anything? No? Uh, this is the 10th year that we've been self-insured in, in terms of our insurance. And just a uh, side note, a good note, we have had a 60% reduction in our workers' comp claims since we've been uh, self-insured. So. Pretty good. That is, that is awesome. Yeah, and I, I'll just say uh, a lot of that falls on Kay. I mean, she's on top of that. Uh, I wouldn't say hounds, but she 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 stays on uh, stays on all of us. Make sure that we're providing a safe place to work and uh, go through the, the the training that's necessary. So I tip my hat to you, Kay. Good work. How are you? We're doing fine. We need a little bit of a breather after open enrollment. We did get all 381 of our folks enrolled, and so we're in the process of kind of cross-checking the data and stuff before January hits. Be sure everything is correct for everybody come January 1st. So that's kept us very busy. So uh, that's kind of where we're at right now in the Human Resource Department. Good. Questions for Jeff? Thanks. Mr. Strange? Yes, ma'am. We are in the final design stages of the wastewater plant expansion. Uh, should finish that up in December. We have submitted the letter to SRF. Uh, we were on the priority ranking list um, this year. There's uh, been a $3 million cap grant with 300,000 principal forgiveness. 
Uh, last year, when we were approved, it was three million, and, but only a hundred thousand principal forgiveness. So, uh, the rest of those funds would come from low interest rate loans from SRF, and uh, we have sent them our schedule to see if it meets their criteria of be ready. You know, when we're awarded, so we haven't heard back from them yet. Um, did meet with Jimmy Haley and his design team on the water model. Uh, getting that rolling, it's going to take several months to, to get up and running and, and be able to uh, provide the model that we need to be able to model our water system. And I'm sure you're going to speak about the Christmas parade, so I'll let you do that. And just to say, SRF has been so great to work with. That was the first meeting that Harry and I had was about state revolving fund loans when both of us came on board. Yep. And um, they have just been phenomenal. Good folks. They are. They are. So the we really appreciate it. person has been Jill. Yes. Uh, no doubt. Coordinating our parade again. I know we're all getting the emails and so forth. She is so on top of that, it appears. So I would please agree. give her our, our gratitude. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Miss Diane? Uh, we have issued, so far, 25 new business licenses for this month and we're currently working with our codes department to develop a program so that we can catch uh, contractors who do not have a business license to make sure they don't fall through the crack or we're having mm -hmm. to go hunt them down after the fact. So. Right. I know our stuff's not due till the end of February but have we been having any concerns or complaints in regards to or just uh -huh. questions more? in regards to the taxes? Uh, well, we've had some, some phone calls and people okay. just, I guess, just didn't realize to look on there, but uh, most of the calls have been very uh, encouraging. Good. They they like this process Good. of the one-stop shopping. So, And I think we've gotten one payment from the trustee Good. so far. So Great. Questions for Ms. Diane? Mr. Gill? I had a list of things, but most of them have been touched on. Clearly, we've got a lot of projects that are in the works. We're starting up or wrapping up or somewhere in between. So uh, these guys are really busy and working hard. Uh, we're working on employee evaluations now uh, that'll influence a lot of things in the spring. Uh, Jeff's done a good job on that, as has Rebecca, in writing the program. Bill Culverson is still out. Uh, so I'll, uh, I want to wish him the best uh, good guy we miss him uh also i was going to mention jill strange we appreciate jill very much and lastly it's uh we had a staff meeting the other day it's pretty hard to believe we're already starting on next year's budget uh so it's a several uh, several month pro uh, process and uh come april we'll be laying another budget out for you great jeff Ms. Mary Council, uh, the same night as the Christmas uh, tree lighting, uh, Mike Strange and um, Mark Parker and I went to, to Laverne. They just had some questions as you know, we have a gas franchise with Laverne and it's about time to, uh, for renewal on that. They had a, a, a number of questions uh, of which uh, Mr. Strange and I need to meet with Mr. Gill and we're gonna get with Mr. Gill this week and uh, let him determine kind of where we go from there with those questions. Um, and then also, uh, <coughs> just to answer you about recodification, I know that I'd wanted to have it in uh, December, by December. However, because we're using American Legal, which I'm very excited about, and I'm very uh, uh, grateful that you all allowed us to, to hire them, uh, we're just in line. So I'd rather uh, have it a few months later than I wanted and have it right than, than have it hurried and, and not be a good product. So uh, everything's still on board to do it. It's just that they they handle the entire United States uh, Geographically, so anyway, that's on board. How will that uh, be presented to us, or what, what? What do you think the process for that's going to be? <clears throat> they will provide us with the document, obviously, eventually, um, and we have sent them all of our changes throughout the years for the last ten years. Those types of things. Uh, we will bring it to you then. Uh, obviously, I'll email it to you or put it in Dropbox so that you have plenty of time to begin looking at it, um, and then we will just present it as we, as we would a regular ordinance. Obviously, it's pretty substantial, uh, but we will point out any changes that there have been, and you'll have those uh, identified if there's any substantial changes other than a, uh, an and or an or or those types of things. And we'll have it in two readings. 
Have they given you an estimate on time, like 60 to 90 they, days? Or they believe that it will like be that. in January, January okay. to February, so that would start. It's probably, I'd probably try to bring it to you in January at workshop, and then we bring it to the council in February. Is my plan. A real brief overview on the Laverne, uh, working with them, what you all went, just because we have new council members and to refresh for those that have been here for a while, I'm what's sure. going on? Just of what the... The agreement that we have with the franchise agreement has been in place, uh, at least we've been serving gas there since 1980 in Laverne. Um, in 2009, uh, the town council uh, entered into a, a franchise agreement with Laverne, a new document that has one renewal with it of 10 years. However, two years prior to that renewal, which would be 2019, we have to send them notification that we would like to continue the, the uh, franchise agreement uh, to renew it we have done that um, the mayor waldron had asked us to uh, come down and because some of the new aldermen had not you know been familiar with this so in case they had some questions for us to come down um, some of the questions that they have asked uh, that we need to speak with mr gill about is they've asked about us serving uh, or installing lines into existing neighborhoods uh, such as possibly uh, 100 homes a, uh, a year or something like that. Not all of the aldermen, but the mayor has asked us to look at that. Um, obviously, I won't delve into all of that, but there's, we have a lot of concerns of what we would even be able to do, uh, but Mr. Gill will be able to evaluate that even, even better and we'll probably bring As y'all get into that, can you bring it back to us at a workshop just to give us plenty of... We will definitely have time. to. Okay. Okay, uh, anything for Jeff? Raquel? I have nothing. Nothing? HG? I guess the only thing I want to do is reiterate what uh, Rex has already uh, said that uh, with the holiday seasons coming up, shop open. Keep your money at home. Agreed. Nothing for me. Nothing? Steve? Uh, I got a couple of things. I know <laughs> tomorrow is the uh, Town of Smyrna employee luncheon. Um, I, I am going to be out of town leaving tomorrow um, for the next four or five days celebrating my 25th wedding anniversary. So if you directors would pass on to the employees that um, I apologize I'm not going to be present, but I definitely appreciate all the work that they've done over this last year and hope they enjoy their uh, holidays that are coming up with their families. So um, sorry I'm not going to be able to make that. We didn't realize I was going to be elected when we planned this trip. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, also, because of that, I also missed the Christmas parade. Um, my wife wasn't as upset as I will be. I actually enjoyed that last year. My wife did not. Uh, <laughs> it looks like uh, the weather is going to be great. She did. She really didn't like being cold. You might so. want to stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm I told saying. her. I told her I was going to throw her under the bus. I told her. Um, but no, y'all. It looks like y'all are going to have really nice weather. So if I'm going to pick one to to miss i should have missed last year it was cold so maybe pam needs to ride a different golf cart yeah maybe they, she they, could ride with connie <laughs> <laughs> they would know they, more people they, than we do I they probably, probably wouldn't go they turn around <laughs> go the other way <laughs> but no I just um I, I i won't be there and uh just wanted to make sure that uh y'all y'all represent us well i'm sure you will <laughs> throw some tootsie rolls for me <laughs> that's all Lori. I, too, will be uh, not able to attend the meeting tomorrow, so if you'll pass on to your employees that, you know, Merry Christmas to them. I hope they enjoy their, uh, their time with their family and their friends this holiday season. Yeah, uh, I know Christmas is about quite a month away. You won't be here uh, for our next meeting, so I just wanted to extend a Merry Christmas to you and Britt while you're on vacation, in a way, soaking up some sun somewhere while we're all dealing with bad weather and rain and, <coughs> there and all that, but uh, <laughs> to tell you that, uh, anybody that may not view our next meeting, Merry Christmas to our citizens out there. We appreciate everything from them. Our employees, you know, we are going to celebrate them tomorrow. I want to say thank you to them openly here tonight. And we continue to uh, have a great town, and it's because of these people. It's because of these people here and the people that work with them. So all of you guys, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations to Mike Allen, well-deserved. Uh, Mike had hip replacement, I believe, didn't he, Mike? And uh, so he's been out of service for just a little bit. And so he also serves with us, uh, with Tim and I, on planning commission. And uh, he's a good servant of the town and well-deserved. And thank Rhonda, his wife, 
I know you're going to touch on uh, the Christmas deal, but I think she's been down there dressing up the uh, downtown Christmas trees with some help with some Carpe folks and things like that. So just want to say thank you to them for what they all do for the community. And last, uh, HG with Shopping Local, Rec Shopping Local. Uh, be patient. There's going to be a lot of traffic. <laughs> there already is, but during Christmas it's going to be uh, heavier, I'm sure. So just have a lot of patience. You've heard tonight, if you've paid attention, we're working on some things that will increase some of our infrastructure and help in the Sam Ridley Corridor in time. So bear with us. We're working on it. Thank you very much. That's all. Um, I just have a couple of items to touch on. Our 43rd annual Christmas Parade will be this Sunday at 2 p.m. on Lowry. It will go from Tomlin Aut Automotive all the way down to Kmart. Um, it's going to be gorgeous weather, so I'm sure we will have lots of people out. We are asking that our citizens bring um, non-perishable food items, and we will have a float in the parade again this year, and people walking alongside that float collecting those non-perishable items for the Nourish Food Bank here in Smyrna. And um, we just think it's a great way for our citizens to be able to give back. Um, we've asked our employees to do the same thing. Council tomorrow, if um, you are coming to the Christmas luncheon, if you'll bring canned food, canned goods, or non-perishable items there, um, Tiffany's going to pick those up for us. Mayor, I had a question about that. It came up at my office huh? meeting because we are doing some things with Nourish Food Bank as well. Uh, it was said there, and you, you can probably expand on this, that it doesn't have to be a canned good. Personal hygiene items and things like that are also very welcomed, and that's generally what they're right. shorter of. Right. So, yeah, that is. Is that right, Lori? That, that that's is. right. Okay. Even birthday, we've expanded into, you know, having birthday supplies <coughs> there. Okay. But in addition to the canned good, I mean, uh, we gave out a lot of, you know, the stovetop stuffing type, instant mashed potatoes, so more than just right. the canned right. goods, too. Okay. And I would say on their website, there's probably a list of items that, um, and maybe we can talk to John about getting that on ours too, some of the items that they might be able to bring. Um, a Front Street Christmas. Um, this is Saturday, December the 9th from 5 to 8. It'll be, they'll have pictures with Santa and his elves. The Santa photos will be $5 per sitting and there'll be s'mores at no charge, Mr. Gill. We'll have carriage rides for $5 a person. Children four and under are free. And we'll have hot chocolate, hot cider, and treats. And the Christmas market will be open from 2 to 8. Um, there'll be direct sales market at Assembly Hall and artisan vendors in the Carpe Artista building at 101 Front Street. A commemorative 2017 Christmas ornament featuring the Sam Davis home will be on sale inside both markets for $12. Um, so we hope to see you out at Front Street on December the 9th, um, Christmas market from 2 to 8, and the event from 5 to 8. Um, update on the Coos Memorial. Mike talked a little bit about it. We're still raising money. They're coming along. I love that we're able to see it <coughs> where it's actually going to be now, and um, we're all going to be able to see it from the ground up, and they are working hard to um, get it in on time. Um, I talked about the food for tomorrow. I also want to pass along condolences to Melissa Dees, who's with the uh, Parks and Rec Department. Um, she lost her son this week, and um, so just want to tell her we're thinking about her and her family. Anything else? I do want to wish a very Merry Christmas to everyone. I won't be here next week and our next meeting, and I hope you all have a wonderful holiday, and just remember the reason for the season. Anything else? Then we are adjourned.